Hello everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, I'm telling you this, this is The Thunder Show, AKA WLTV, the internet's number one wine pastime. And this show is gonna kick serious face in because we're doing Shatten of the Pop, a category I adore, a place that allows 13, 13, different grapes, you know, the kind of loosey-goosey, they let you play around, and I think that's imperative and important, and a place that produces some of the great values in the world. We're gonna talk about Robert Parker's impact on this region, we're gonna look at some Thundercats, we're gonna talk about a bunch of things, let's get some quick things, quick shots, I wanna do some Vayner shots today. Number one, can we relax about Tony Romo? I think he showed a whole, whole lot yesterday with his five interceptions. You know, I should've done this earlier, now I'm gonna look like Monday morning quarterback. I should've did this, I'm gonna start doing these quick shots so I can look cool. We could've gone back two weeks ago when I said, relax on Tony Romo. I mean, Chad Pennington ruled the NFL for 14, 15 games. Number two, TBS, TNT's coverage. I mean, Tony Gwynn, please, you're a tremendous hitter, but if I have to hear you talk about baseball one more time, I'm gonna stick this bottle directly in my eye and close my ears forever. Absolutely atrocious coverage. Can we bring Fox back and quickly? And number three, quick shot of the day, $110,000 at a charity auction to have dinner with Robert Parker. I'm looking for 13 votes, people. That's all you gotta pay, the one three. All right, let's focus on Shot of the Pop. There's really a lot to talk about. Shot of the Pop in the southern region in Rhone in France produces what I think are some of the great wines in the world, and they're still priced fairly well. About 20 years ago, they were very rustic and different and very kind of you know tough to drink and completely unpopular in America, but Robert Parker, as the wine advocate grew, loved these wines, they've changed, they've become more lush and big and bold, too much in my opinion, they've become a little Americanized or kangarooized, but um, still profound and exceptional wines and, and I'm really excited about trying these three today. Uh, another random thought, I wanna give a big shout out to two people, I was just thinking about Wine Library TV on the way to work today, I said you know what, I'm thinking about this, I gotta give a big shout out. Colin D and Brandon M, you know, they've been watching since episode like eight or nine. They're still here, still commenting, still participating. And I just wanted to give those two guys, and listen, there's a lot of people, Julius, you know, he'll probably get crazy. I don't want him to kill me. So, but there's mounds and mounds of people that have been here since episode one. Now we're into what, almost a 3.30. I mean, it's just, you know, just was driving, thinking about how crazy it is that those people have been on board commenting and linking and doing all the things and friending me up in all these places. It's just, it's really means a lot. I wanted to give those guys a little bit of a shout out. Um, one other big, big, big thing. Somebody emailed me yesterday and said, Gary, I don't wanna be a clown. Every time I go into a uh, restaurant, I'm always bringing wine in a brown paper bag. Can you help me? So I've decided not only does he need help, but all the Vaniacs probably need help. And so I'm gonna do something crazy. And don't tell Pops. Shh, we don't want Big Sasha to find out because we're gonna lose money on this one. But you know, I think it's time. I think it's time we do this. We're gonna give, look at this one. This is one of the blanks too. It doesn't even have the Wine Library logo on it. You're gonna get one with one of the Wine Library logo. But this is a bag that I bring to the, you know, to the restaurants. It's insulated for the white wine, so keep it cold or cellar temperature. Goes in there. I think there's $7.99 plus $7 or $6 shipping. We're gonna coat it up. And this is the coat I'm gonna use when I decide to become Santa Claus. Because I like to Santa Claus it up once in a while. I have it in a while. And this, this is Jeff from Cleveland uh, that really got me to do this today. Uh, so you guys can all thank him in the comments. Remember to thank Jeff. We're gonna do this. It's gonna be called the Rad Me Up Code. Rad, I'm trying to bring that word back. Rad me up. And this is what we're gonna rad me up with. You know, seven nice letters, rad me up. We will ship this bag in as many as you want. Christmas coming around, Hanukkah, whatever you, you know, gift time. They're, Let's. They're great bags. You have one, lot? My wife loves hers. $3.99 and free shipping. That's all you need. Rad me up, Mott, link it up. And I think people will be pumped. You know, I, I, I wanna set the tone. You know, I figure if I give you guys something, you'll like me through this show. All right, let's go. Telegram, Shot of the Pop, 2005 vintage, 2005 very interesting vintage. This comes from View Telegraph, uh, which is a, a very serious producer. This is a 88 to 91 pointer from Josh Reynolds who writes for Steven Tanzer, 30 US dollars. This wine is 90% Grenache, 10% Mubedra, and uh, I'm excited about trying this. 2005 is a very exciting vintage in the Rhone. You know, some big, bold, explosive wines. Uh, again, this is the second label of View Telegraph, their Telegram. And it comes at a very good price, 30 US dollars. Bones, as we like to say on the Thunder Show. Um, there are 13 million bottles or so produced in, uh, 
in Shatton of the Pop, and only 1%, Mott, 1%, like giant fans in New York and New Jersey. Only 1% of them are white wines. So we're focusing on the red wines, but the Viognier's, the Marsan, the Roussan blends from Chateau of the Pop are incredible. You should seek them out. We'll do a show on those very very soon. 99% though are red, and they're usually dominated by Grenache. Uh, we do see Mavedra as well. Uh, s- s- you know, Cunha, Cinso, a lot of great, great Syrah. A lot of great grapes are allowed to make this. This is 90 Grenache, 10% Mavedra. Classic Rome grapes, nice, nice color. Let's get a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Very pretty on the nose. I get a little bit of a burnt leather bootstrap component coming on. There's a little bit of dark chocolate. I get a little bit of mud, which is kind of nice. Little henny action. It's it's got a little bit of like a a, a, a roasted hen component of nose. Very nice, very beautiful cherry raspberry syrup component as well. Very pretty nose. All of you know who watched the Thunder Show that if there's a great bouquet, I'm going to be on board. So right off the top, I'm excited about where this wine's going. Let's give it a little bit of a whirl. Good firm tannins, really dry, nice austere action. I like the light feathered kind of component of like shaved asparagus. If you've never done shaved asparagus, it's really cool and I just kind of like doing this. By the way, if you're watching this right now, just do this. It's, it really feels nice if you have soft, soft skin like I do. Anyway, um, shaved asparagus component coming through. I get some nice dark chocolate, really pretty, beautiful, fresh, massively sized. Strawberries are coming through in this. This is a very nice complete wine. It's got some good overall mouthfeel, nice dry firm tannins. Um, it's just a well-made Chat of the Pop. It's not doing anything too crazy. I, I do like the the fullness and the lushness. It's a voluptuous uh, Chat of the Pop. You know, it's kind of, you know, you like the, you know, these love handles coming through. Um, you know, just a well-made Chat of the Pop and a 30 bucks really kind of brings some serious structure. Uh, I'm gonna go 90 plus points in this wine. I like it, it's a good start. Um, I, I think it's a Chat of the Pop that a lot of people can get into. I like the price point of this wine. I think this is a well-made wine. Kermit Lynch brings us in. Again, an amazing importer. I think all in all, an extremely well-made, very balanced, Good flavored Chateau of the Pop, a good entry because Chateau of the Pops can get pricey and it's a good, good start. I'm excited about this. Nice wine. I can see this wine lasting for five to ten years easily in the cellar. It's drinking now after about an hour and a half of about two and a half hours of opening. I think it's doing real well without a decanter. Um, so I, I think this is a wine that can definitely be approached now or put away for later. Let's move on. Gigal, 2003 Chateau of the Pop. 95 points, wine and spirits, 28 US dollars. You know I like the 28 because that's Curtis Martin's number and he's a legend, first ballot Hall of Famer. Let's see what this wine's all about. Gigal has been very hot for a while now after the Shatnik the Pop. I think back in 99 was the uh, wine of the year, the 99 vintage meat was the 2001, I can't remember. Just a couple years ago, the Shatnik the Pop was the wine of the year from the Wine Spectator, which has really branded this wine, has carried it over the last couple of vintages. People continuously want to drink this. Um, this has some nice color. Let's pour a little for all the Vaniacs that are no longer with us. And let's give it a little bit of a sniffy, sniff, 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 sniff. Now this wine, smells awkward. There's a hint of asphalt coming through on this nose. There's also a clear cut, earthy, manure, you know, dirty sheep, you know, farm, hillbilly gym. Yeah, I knew hillbilly gym here. This is a, he likes it, this is a farmer's nose and uh, you know, this wine has definite poop, manure components coming through in the nose, and some other rather random, unappealing nose components that I think a lot of people would be like, Egh. Now, 
The part that's bothered me a little bit is it's rounded with some minty eucalyptus kind of components and it's shooting off an extremely awkward aromatic experience. And when it goes AAE on me, I'm kind of like, eh. So I'm kind of down on this nose as well. Let's give it a little bit of a whirl. There's a raspberry component to this one. I almost get beef blood. If you've ever worked with really great beef after you've killed an animal, you're gonna know what beef blood kind of tastes like. There's a beef blood component on this. There's also a round cinnamon component on this flavor profile, which is kind of interesting. Um, but this wine has ADD. It is completely bouncing all over the place and I can't grasp my palate around it. I'm a little bit disappointed by this wine. It's got some hollow action in the mid palate. The finish is solid. It's lasting, but I'm not so sure I like the flavor. I mean, this is a wine that I call non-delicious. And if you're non-delicious and you're not tremendously interesting, then you're not gonna do it for me. I'm gonna give this wine a pass with four Z's, and I don't know what Wine and Spirits was drinking, but it's clearly not this wine. And uh, I'm gonna score this wine 86 points. Now, you may think the score is too high considering my reaction, but there are some obvious attractive components to this wine. The mouthfeel is extremely interesting. I, I, I'm looking for the right word. It's, 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 it's got a very nice velvety kind of component to it that I think a lot of people can enjoy. The problem is that velvet is surrounded by flavors of really moss-like dirt rock flavors. I mean, it really does remind me of Edison, New Jersey, circa 1983, before it was all built out and there was a lot of woods and we'd go out and play with our G.I. Joes and we'd get our hands dirty and you know, you kind of lick your hand up and you cut it to make sure there was a cut. You know, well meanwhile you had moss and a little bit of dirt and you know, a little poopy action um, and that's kind of what's going on with this wine. Um, just, you know, it's, it's mouthfeel is just not enough to cover, you know, bring it to the next level. You know, I'm just not feeling this wine. I'm just gonna let it blow over a little bit more. I'm gonna give it one last sippy sip to make sure, you know, I'm on point. It is a wine that I'd like to taste with cheese, but I'm gonna tell you right now, please save yourself. I don't want the emails of saying, did you have a bad bottle or an off bottle? Not every wine that I don't like is an off bottle, people. Gosh, every time. Um, it's not that great. Meh. Let's move on. Domaine de Pegau, 2004, Chateauneuf de Pop, Cuvée Reserve. Very sought after, respected, adored and loved. Shine of the pop. I mean, it's the height of its popularity. It almost reminds me of Justin Timberlake. He's at the height of his top. This is at the height of its popularity right now. 65 US dollars. Offensive lineman Brandon Moore's number. That's a hardcore Jets fan. 65 bones, 94 points, Robert Parker. This wine is 80% Grenache, 9% Syrah, 6% Mavedra, 5% other. Love that other. What is that other? Is that other like iced tea mix or is that other like chemicals? You know what I mean? I always wonder other. What is that like shredded up t-shirts turned into liquid? Um, old 2600 Atari games that, you know, that they, do you know what they did with Atari 2600 games? They Atari buried, buried them in, in the landfills. E.T. E.T., right, that exact game. Very good, Mom. All right, can I rinse? I'm not even sure I'm talking about Atari 2600. I almost feel like, you know, what is other? Is it the, you know, Atari 2600 E.T. games that they buried, they dug up, liquefied them? Them in with this beautiful shout the pop. I love the back too. Alcohol content 11 to 14 percent. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, great color. This is a lot of fun. This is a wine that I'm dying to try. I have not tried this wine at all. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I've been hearing that a lot lately. I want to start using it. I gotta figure out how to figure that out. I gotta incorporate that in the show. 65 bones. Everybody's been buzzing about it. I'm really excited about trying this wine. It's got great, great color. Let's get a little bit of a sniffy sniff because you know everybody at home right now, you know you love to sniffy sniff. And we're dealing with a different wine right off the top. The nose is very complicated and complex and exciting. What do we have going on here? We have some beautiful cabbage and asparagus, excuse me, cabbage and uh, Brussels sprout action on the nose. So there's some vegetable components which I'm enjoying, but it feels like it's being covered 
by a huge vanilla component. I get some dark black licorice and uh, some wild cassis going on. So let's give this a little bit of a whirl. Mama! Wow! Wow. Bring out the funnel. It's time to funnel some wine. Sometimes when I really love a wine, I find it a really fun thing to do. For some reason, it adds to the flavor profile. Blah, blah, blah. Adds to the flavor profile. I like to bite the wine while it's in my mouth. That's what I was doing right there. Um, this wine is kicking some serious ass. Uh, had to drop the A-bomb, I'm sorry. I know there's so many kids under 15 watching the show. Um, this wine is hugely complex. I get enormous amounts of bacon and leather flavor components, which I'm adoring. Blueberry pie to you're touching the sky. I had to rhyme it, because I liked it so much. I mean, this wine is loaded with fresh berries, wild berries, but bacon and leather, and I'm getting vanilla for days, which I'm enjoying quite a bit. Very luscious, huge mouthfeel, massive attack, beautiful, firm, ripe tannins, but covered with so much fruit and complexity, it's not bothering me at all. Seamless mid palate, structured, first, second, third scene, on point. Long, long finish, well rounded. This wine is absolutely phenomenal. This wine has tremendous potential. Great firm tannins, still tasting them, that make me believe this wine will last for a good 10 plus years. But I can tell you right now, the way it's drinking right now, it's impressive. I mean, this is collector's wine, this is serious wine drinker's wine. This is not for everybody's budget, 65 bones, expensive. You can buy six bottles of wine at this price point that should bring you enjoyment. However, if you're looking for something serious, real, next level stuff, listen, I can have a whole, whole lot of fun playing on my Commodore 64, but when you wanna go to the big boys and play with some Apple products, this is the kind of wine you wanna do it with. completely off the charts, just elegance and refinement. This wine is much classier, much cooler, and much more polished than I am. So I'm gonna bow and score it 94 plus points. I'm gonna plus you up, RP. Parker went 94, I'm gonna go 94 plus. This is a wine I tremendously recommend you write down, put in your wallet, expense account, eating out, special night, whip that out, use it, order it, find it, Drink it, email me back, like me, because I put you on. This wine is off the stinking charts. Tremendous effort by Pei Gao. This is what I'm looking at in, and what I'm looking for in serious wine. Balance and harmony. See that? Whoa. That's what this wine is all about. It's actually brought me down. Usually I get excited. This has actually calmed me down. It's put me in a right kind of place, and it's a good darn place. This was tremendous. Way to go. Question of the day. Man, this was good. Question of the day. What is the nicest thing you've done lately? And if you haven't done something nice, what are you waiting for? Because you, me, wines like this, Thundercats, Bouncing Corks, all that jazz, all of it, we are folks. I mean, you need to embrace it. And you know what? Let's make this pass along day. Can you pass the show on to everybody? Can we link up the URL and send it to your friends and tell them, hey, watch this guy Gary, he's not that bad of a chap. All of that is changing the wine world and nobody's gonna stop us.